Do you remember when everybody was saying EVs are dead? Nobody wants them. Oh my God, like who, who would buy an EV, right? Something just broke uh, from the United States government that I think points to a very clear outcome here. And we're gonna al analyze this very, very deeply because it, it, there's a lot going on here and it's very important for all of us to be on the same page. So this just broke uh, from the White House. Uh, the Biden administration just put out a fact sheet that said President Biden to protect American workers and businesses from China's unfair trade practices. And there's a bunch of stuff uh, about battery materials, uh, steel and aluminum and things like that. But the big thing I want to focus on is the electric vehicle uh, tariff. So the tariff rate on electric vehicles under Section 301 will increase from 25% to 100% in 2024. This is a very interesting bit of news because one of the prevailing theories that's been out there from mainstream media, from a bunch of people talking about this, Dave, is a headline like this. EV euphoria is dead. Automakers are scaling back or delaying their electric vehicle plans. And a lot of this was, hey, you know, Tesla sales are slowing down. Ford is giving up uh, on their plans to grow EVs. GM as well. Volkswagen. There's a host of different players. But then my question becomes, and this is like where I think it's very important to ask this question. If nobody wanted EVs, why did the U.S. administration feel like they had to increase tariffs on electric vehicles from China by four times, from 25% to 100%, which essentially makes electric vehicles coming out of China extremely, extremely expensive? So why, why would that be? And I have the answer. <laughs> we'll see if I'm right or wrong in the next few years. So if you follow this channel closely, you know that legacy automakers, companies like Ford, GM, and others have been trying to do electric vehicles. They've been trying to put electric vehicles out there. And Ford is the only one out there that's putting out their financials, basically how much money they're making or losing. And the only thing that we're seeing from these legacy automakers, and Ford, again, being the only one that's willing to share that information, is that their sales are not doing too hot. So Ford, in the first quarter of 2023, sold about 12,000 EVs. They plateaued in 2023 uh, for the rest of the year, and then went back down to 10,000. But the bigger thing here, here is that they are losing a gigantic amount of money in electric vehicles. In the first quarter of 2023, Ford lost about $700 million, so they lost $700 million. And in the first quarter, they lost that in the first quarter rather, they lost $1.3 billion. The only automaker out there that has been able to make a profit in electric vehicles, at least in the Western nations, China is still kind of dubious if they're making um, uh, uh, profits in electric vehicles or not. But the only one here is Tesla. They make about 17% gross margin on their products. And as of the first quarter of 2024, Ford, they've generated about $1.1 billion of net profit from that business. Whereas Ford, GM, Volkswagen, and everybody else is losing money on their EVs. And so the way I read this tariff, this thing from the White House that said that they're quadrupling the tariffs from 25% to 100% electric vehicles, what it really is, is not so much uh, an unfairness thing with, with China, and let's put politics aside, I'm not talking about from a political perspective, it's very obvious that what the administration is doing is protecting legacy automakers from the fact that they cannot make electric vehicles profitably. Imagine what happens where you have a ton of Chinese uh, EVs landing on shores at, say, a fair, a fair price where they're not doubled or tripled from where they should be, and they start competing against electric vehicles from players like Ford that haven't been able to sell a lot of EVs, and the EVs that they sell are at a huge loss. And of course, if we look at the data and see how many car sales there are for electric vehicles, it's very obvious that they're not really going away. The growth might be slowing a little bit, but they're still selling more. In 2023, China sold about 8 million EVs, in Europe 3.2, in the United States 1.4, and that's a big clue right there, right? The United States is far behind everybody else in selling EVs, and in 2024, it's set to grow even more. China 10 million, Europe 3.4 from 3.2, very small, but China's growing a lot more. United States is growing from 1.4 to 1.7. That's mostly just Tesla selling more of the Model S and the Model X and the 3 and the Y and the Cybertruck. So it's very obvious now, right? why this tariff exists. It exists. It exists because China is making a ton of electric vehicles. And these electric vehicles, one of the falsehoods of electric vehicle and, and how much they cost is that they're very, very expensive. That, you know, you buy an electric vehicle, it costs way too much to charge, it breaks all the time, the batteries catch fire. 
which is obviously bullshit. And the reason why that's bullshit is that there is a study from Consumer Reports uh, where they just released uh, a few weeks ago, four of the five least expensive car brands to maintain are American. But here's the biggest takeaway if we scroll all the way down. Which one is the cheapest one to maintain over 10 years? Oh, wow, an electric vehicle maker, Tesla. Right. And this isn't like a oh pro Tesla, whatever. No, I'm just looking at hard data that says the cheapest car to own over 10 years from maintenance and repair cost perspective is an electric vehicle. Tesla only sells electric vehicles. It costs about four thousand dollars over 10 years uh, to maintain and repair an electric vehicle. And every single other brand is a gas car and they all cost more, including Toyota, including Ford, Chevy, Hyundai, Nissan, Mazda, etc. The cheapest car to maintain is a Tesla. So what does that mean? Electric vehicles over the long term are going to be the lowest cost per mile. And so why did the Biden administration have to do this? Again, because they have to protect from this incredible growth coming into the United States from other countries and Tesla, which is an American company. <laughs> Luckily for Tesla, they're probably going to benefit from this, to be honest, because they're being protected against uh, competitors, really. But that's why this is happening is because legacy automakers cannot compete against electric vehicles are quickly becoming cheaper and they're cheaper to maintain over time. We have hard data that proves this. And this is where it gets crazier because there's data from Cox Automotive, which is a, essentially a automaker research agency that shows that electric vehicle ownership is only going to go up from here in the United States. And the main reason why is because of price. I'll show you some of the slides. So the slide from this study starts with 2024 Cox Automotive Path to EV Adoption Study. This is this literally came out, I think, yesterday, May 2024. And the title is The Skeptics Are Coming. This is probably a play on uh, winter is coming. <laughs> the skeptics are coming. And so some of the data points from this, uh, these slides, I'll put the link to the study below. There's a gigantic amount of super interesting data. And so here's one of the questions. Would consider purchasing an EV if same price as an uh, ICE alternative? This is a gas car, uh, internal combustion engine. Uh, definitely or probably consider it went from 33% in 2021 to 46% in 2024, which means that as electric vehicles get cheaper, as electric vehicles get cheaper to own, lease, finance from automakers, more and more people are likely to purchase an electric vehicle. Here's another one. More exposure to EVs opens the door to higher consideration. The blue bar is people that consider EVs and the gray bar is people that are skeptics of EVs. People who consider EVs that know someone who currently owns an EV is 72%, whereas only 17% of people who consider EVs don't know anyone who owns an EV. So what does that say? The more people know people who own an EV, the more likely they are to consider an EV. And if you're a skeptic, that applies as well. Not as much, but it definitely applies. If you're a skeptic, you go from 49% of a skeptics not knowing anyone who owns an EV to 40%. As more and more people buy EVs, more and more people buy EVs. And this is what Cox is predicting in the next few years. If we look at this chart from the study, EV consideration expected to surge in second half of the decade, second wave as skeptics become considerers. And what this chart is trying to explain here is that from 2025, about 55% of people they're predicting, right, will consider an EV newer use in the next 12 months. By 2026 to 2028, those skeptics are going to start turning into considerers to where you go from 55% of the market considering an EV to 79%. Right. So think about that for a second. We're going to go to roughly 80 percent of the U.S. buying public for cars, period. Seventy nine percent of them will consider an electric vehicle within 12 months by 2026 through 2028. So what does that mean? A huge majority of the population is going to want to buy an EV. Right. So when the administration does something like this of quadrupling the tariff from Chinese EVs, what they're signaling is that, hey, if China were to come in and do that, we're screwed <laughs> because most people, a majority of the people are going to consider a huge majority of the population will consider an electric vehicle by 2028. I'm animated on this video because this is like something we've been talking about for a really long time. There's obvious data points starting to land in front of everybody to see. And it's like, OK, <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. I just I just love looking at this data. That's what it really comes down to. And then here's another uh, bit of data from Cox. So nearly all shoppers could be enticed to purchase an electric vehicle sooner. And so if you're looking at people between one to two years, 98% of them could be enticed to purchase an EV earlier if the price 
comes down. Prices top reason to delay their EV purchase. Nearly half aren't familiar with the EV tax incentives, which is actually a very interesting one because this also talks about education. There's a $7,500 EV tax credit in the United States that you can take advantage of as long as you qualify from an income perspective, which you can get a uh, bypass, which you bypass with leasing. Leasing doesn't include an income thing. So you can go on Tesla's website right now and lease a Tesla for 300 bucks a month if your income is way above the limit for financing or buying one. But price is the main switcher for the people considering an EV in one to two years. What does that mean? As EVs get cheaper, more people will consider them quicker. Same exact thing with the three to five year guys. More uh, likely to cite a lack of knowledge about EVs as a barrier, but 96% of them could still be enticed to consider an EV earlier if they had more information on total cost of ownership and cost of charging. Considerations highly impacted by non-financial incentives like free charging, free home charger, free maintenance plans. And that's funny as they cite non-financial incentives, but when I read free, what does that mean? No money, <laughs> very much financial. And even for those that are considering an EV in maybe the next five years, and 88% of them could be enticed to consider an EV earlier, too expensive is a top barrier. Again, this theme of price, it keeps coming up, price, 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 right? And what are Chinese companies extremely good at? Lowering price. Everything we buy, everything we own, right? Why is it built in China? Because the cost of manufacturing is dirt cheap and then they can dump it in the United States and we all want to buy it. But funnily enough, why would the US admin put a 4X tariff increase on electric vehicles? Again, because the United States is not ready from a manufacturing perspective to absorb electric vehicles because everybody else, every other company, Chinese ones and Tesla in particular, have figured out how to make affordable electric vehicles, so one of them at least profitably in Tesla, that people want, that people want. And as people get more and more aware of the advantages of electric vehicles from a cost perspective, like maintenance and repairs for electric vehicles being the cheapest by far over 10 years, which puts to rest one of those crazy fears that people have about EVs. As people get more and more aware of people around them having an EV, again, this chart from the study, where 72% of people considering an electric vehicle know somebody who owns one versus only 17% would considering one know somebody that owns one, right? So as people become more and more aware of the technology, they become a lot warmer to it. And as this, this the sales increase in 2023, going from a total of roughly call it 12 to 13 million cars sold in the, United, uh, in the world were EVs, in 2024, it's gonna go up to roughly 17 million or so. As those sales increase, that increases the number of people that have EVs. It seems pretty obvious to me where this is all going. Um, and it's we've been talking about this a lot on this channel. And these data points, in my opinion, are about as clear as they get. But I want to hear your opinion in the comment section below. Do you think this lines up? Do you think this jives? And let's see where we go from here. If you enjoyed this, like and subscribe. If you want to support, links in the description below. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye, everybody.